Hello everybody, how you doing today? It is a new day, it's a fresh day. I hope you're up shaking and baking. I always say that all my guests are fascinating and amazing people. I first saw Emmanuel Asuko speak at the Dr. Daniel Moses event. Yeah, I was very impressed. I was like, no man, I have to get this guy on the pod. I know he's a big man and he's very busy, so to get him is not easy. <laughs> I finally got the man, the myth, and the legend on the podcast today. Welcome, brother. How's it going, man? Yeah, it's good, cool, man. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. I know it's been it's been effort to get here, but we're finally here. It's good to be here. Yes, man. Asuka is a financial advisor. Is an author. You've seen me on BBC One, Channel Four, ITV, Channel Channel Five underscore TV, and is also the founder of One Stop Save. Yes. Uh, One Stop Save is a financial is an uh, is a financial service uh, company. It is empowering people to save, make, uh, and manage their money. Dedicated to helping you find deals and cutting your costs. So you want to check that? I'm going to put all of those links in the show notes. Uh, that was very very. So man, once I heard you speak, and you, there was a story you, you said at the at the conference when you were speaking. I think where you used to live, it was like the postcode was sort of close to is it canary wharf now so you could yes. see canary wharf from where you were yeah and what you said was very powerful like where you were there was not a lot of money but you could see that this is where your future belongs talk yes. to us about you know the power of vision you know in becoming financially successful yeah no um i always tell the story so you know in the uk we have postcodes and, and my postcode was e14 um which is a council state it's, um, you know, council living, people, a lot of people are on benefits or low income families. You know, it's, it's not an affluent place. But Canary Wharf is something that was built and it's also E14. So you're looking at the head office of Barclays, um, HSBC, Goldman, all of these ones that have their head offices in Canary Wharf all have the same postcode E14. So you can imagine you're living on a council estate. You know your parents are just trying to to make ends meet yet you're sharing a postcode you're sharing an address code with some of the biggest financial companies in the world and these you know these are billion dollar companies so for me it was about actually not looking at the buildings that i'm in and where mm -hmm. i am mm -hmm. but looking at where do i want to be where do i want to go and so i these big tall um skyscraper buildings that i used to see and they now became my vision board. So mm -hmm. people, it's so important to see beyond your situation. Because when I meet people and they see me, the money man, they're like, E man, I ain't got no money. I'm broke. I'm struggling. Did it. And that's all they see of themselves. And if that's all you see of yourself, that's all you'll find of yourself. But when you Come start on, to man. see the opportunities inside of you and to say, well, actually, you know what? These are the skills I have. These, this is the value I can add, or this is what I'm good at, or these are the things that I can now use to change my situation. And this is where I'm trying to get to because there's something powerful of knowing something exists. I always tell people about um, Usain Bolt. When, before Usain Bolt, people used to run 999, 998. Then he ran, he ran 996. Nine five, and all of a sudden, when pe even the person that come last was mm. run under ten, run under ten seconds. The, whereas a before, the person who won would struggle mm -hmm. to run under ten seconds. Mm. But once you've seen it and you know it exists, mm -hmm. now you can go for it. And so that's that was a powerful thing for me. And that's what I tell people: if you want that house, put that out there. Make sure you're seeing it on a regular basis. If you want that car, make sure you're seeing that. If you want, if you want the job, if you, the lifestyle, whatever you want put on your vision board and then make positive actions towards reaching it. That's very, 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 very powerful. Extremely powerful. I mean, as somebody who I've consulted and coached people one-on-one -on -one and in group settings on financial independence and mastery, what are some of the things that keep people poor? What are the poverty money mindsets that keep people poor? I think the biggest thing is people don't love themselves. It's the, it's the biggest. The first thing I tell any of my clients is to love yourself. 
society, the way society is worked is designed to make you not love yourself and to feel that the only way that you can have any value or any importance is by the things that you buy or the things that the car you drive, the house you live in, the area you live in, the school your kids go to, the the network that you're able to be in. And so because of that, people are forever consuming. So you, you get a car now, six months later, your friend gets another car. Now you hate your car. Mm. You buy a new house. A year later, you go to your friend's house. His house is bigger than yours. Now you hate your house. Mm. And so you're never content in life because you're always searching for validation from the things that you can buy and the things that you can own. But these things always go down in value. So it's a losing game. Mm. You're, you're, you're putting your hope and value in something that, that doesn't keep his value. Uh, we know when you buy that car, the second you drive it home, it's worth less. Mm. So... You telling yourself that your value comes from something that you know in two or three years' time is not even going to be worth half of what you bought it for mm. means that you always need to go back and replenish. You yeah. always need to go back and buy. And so the number one thing I tell people is love yourself. When you realize that you are one of a kind, there is only one of you, and anything that is one of a kind is rare, and anything that's rare is valuable. Mm. So if you understand that you are valuable, then the clothes that you wear don't make you valuable. You make them valuable. You are, val you are already valuable with or without these clothes, without these brand names. The other day, there was a thing that came out that, you know, Louis Vuitton, the actual price of the material and actual labor to make a Louis Vuitton bag was less than, you know, was like less than 150 pounds. Whoa. Yet, yet they sell these bags for between three to 5,000, if not more pounds. Mm -hmm. So the value doesn't come from the actual material, the bag itself. The value comes from the social credibility, yeah. and the social clout that you get because you've got this bag. Now you feel more confident. Now you feel people envy you. Now you feel you have something that other people can't afford to have. So you feel better and you are paying for that feeling. But if I already know I'm valuable, I don't need to spend £5,000 for something I know is only worth £150. Mm. I'll just get myself a hundred and fifty pound bag and know I'm already valuable. Mm. See, there's a difference in mindset. There. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. So it's our it's, it's our group psychology that gives this product their value. Exactly. Wow. 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 What are some of the I mean you've you've interacted with a lot of successful people. Yes. Who understand the money game. Yes. Yeah. What are some of the common traits among them? I think funny people that that understand the money game love money. Like, they love money. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it, it sounds, I like that. <laughs> You're gonna hang a lot of religious people, but the love of money is the root. <laughs> you know, but what, what I mean is, is that they love making money. Do you know what I mean? They love mm, the process. They love, they love the game. Money. They love mm. the game. So where, like, for, I'll give you an example. Someone like myself, my car. I've been wanting to change my car for the last three years. And and rightly so. You know, I've been making money. I'm doing well. Mm. But for me, every time I, I save that money to buy a new car, I think that's that I can invest that in my company. And that mean my company can make X, X, Y, Z. I can invest that in staff, which means that, oh, I get more time to spend with my family and my kids. Do you understand? Like, when you understand the money game, it's like, sometimes it's like, I know that money is a tool to make more money. So... I'm less likely to put my money into things that I know have no value other than the social side of things, other than what people may think about me. And so it's the same with property. I, I have people that love property and yes, they deserve to go on nice flights and holidays. But when they make that money, the first thing they think of is I could, I could fly first class or I could go business class or I could, you know, go, but actually if I go on a smaller holiday, I can get another property. Mm. And, do you understand? They love the game. So the way they see, and so that, and that building of wealth, that, 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 the way they love the game of making money, it means that they don't necessarily fall for the traps of, you know, spending unnecessarily or, or like, I'm, I met someone the other day who literally, we were doing this TV show mm -hmm. and we did the TV show and um, we went to their wardrobe. They said they want to buy a house and they were like, I can't afford it. So we went to their bedroom. Went to, their, went to their closet, counted all their clothes, all their bags, all their shoes, worth over 50,000. Today they say they haven't even got, they haven't got 5,000 5, pounds in savings. And they say they haven't, they can't afford to buy a house. 
the deposit is sitting in their clothes. <laughs> They should go to a vintage store and buy clothes, man. <laughs> so, so sometimes... It's powerful! Wow. 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 This is something. Wow. They are depositing in their clothes. Imagine, they are exactly. depositing in their clothes. And for a lot of people, too, they are depositing in their car. <laughs> Exactly, it's in the things when you well, look at the spending habits and you look yeah. at how they're spending their money. That's where that's where it's all going. It is it's going on on these frivolous things that they don't actually need to be spending money on. So it's so important that we actually look at where it is. Like actually, even that business. Some people I've been people that say, "Oh, I haven't got enough income," but sometimes you've got talent. You are doing stuff. You're a really good cook. Mm, mm. You, you never thought to yourself that oh, I'm a really good cook. Maybe somebody might want to buy my food other than just feeding my family. My husband is always comp complimenting my food. You never thought to yourself, oh, that could be that could be a way to bring extra income into the household. Or or you you know, you're really good at sewing. I was saying the other day, these days in, in the UK, I'm seeing, you know, white women wearing Ankara dresses. Yes, yes. They're wearing dresses from African fabric. Yeah, yeah, from Nigeria. So yeah. now mm -hmm. so now you now you've got you've got a market where you, if you can sew clothes you're not just selling it to your community. There are other communities that want that want to buy it, buy what you can make. Mm -hmm. Or you've never thought, oh, I can make money from that way. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're sitting here complaining about the government or <clears throat> complaining about tax or complaining about, oh, my, my job won't give me a promotion. You promote yourself. Mm. <laughs> Love it. I like that. Promote yourself. They don't promote you. Yeah, promote yourself <laughs> to CEO of your own company. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, I saw a, I saw a, I saw a chef on Instagram the other day. Apart from displaying his food on Instagram, he has a Substack page. Substack is a newsletter platform. Yes. He charges like a hundred dollars for the whole year and ten ten dollars a month to read his premium newsletter on food. Wow, he's cashing out. Wow. So what you said is spot on. <laughs> and, that's, and, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, even me, like, for example, you know, across my different social media platforms, you know, we're probably getting close to, you know, close to 100,000 yeah. different connections and so forth across all the, all the different platforms. But the reality is, is that do I keep feeding all these, all these people free content or do I just find two, three, four hundred people that will pay me X amount each month to have a one-to-one -one or get some coaching or support for me. Yeah. Like, I feel like people need to realize it's not about the numbers. Sometimes these things are vanity. There are people with a million followers. They still have to go do nine to five. They're still struggling to make money. Yeah. Like, but you will get pat on the back because you've got these followers. Actually, all you need is a small group of people that believe in the value that you bring and pay you on a regular basis. And now you don't even need your job anymore. Mm. You could just focus on adding value to these this core group of people. So it's really important that we start to stop using these these vanity vanity metrics. Metrics, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Trying to get, tell ourselves, oh no, I need a hundred thousand followers. I need one million followers. But actually, mm -hmm. you only need fifty people to pay you, you know, a thousand pounds a month, and now you're now you've got fifty k a month. Do you know what I mean? That's very powerful. What was the trigger moment for you? What triggered this for you for to, to, to put you on this path? Was it a trigger moment? Was it an incident for you to say, you know, I've got to take this money thing very, very seriously? I think the, the number one thing was just seeing my mom struggle. Um, you know, my mom and dad, um, both I was raised by both of them, but my, my dad was always at work, you know? So he was, a, I always only used to see my dad Sunday to go to church. I wow. would see him. Then after, after that, during the week, he's working, he, stud, he was studying to do his accounts degree um, to become a qualified accountant. He was doing security at nights. He was doing whatever jobs were coming. So you wouldn't see him during the week, apart from Sunday to go to church. Then we come back and then he will go and work again or go to the library or wherever it was. So, you know, it was mainly me and my mom. And then obviously my sisters came. But I always felt like my mom worked really hard and... I, I just felt like I have to help her stop this hmm. because there was a point where she got arthritis in her knee. So where my other friends' mums had jobs, um, but their jobs meant that they weren't home. My mum chose to do a dinner lady um, in a school. 
so that she would finish on time so she could be at home to make sure that we wasn't on the street getting into trouble yes. that we were in our house mm. and so because of that dinner lady is a lot of standing so she ended up, ended up having arthritis in her knee ended up having a knee replacement she used to walk with a limp for years just to provide for us so for me i was like what am i going to do like as a man what am i going to do to support my mum to make sure that this investment that she's made in us is not going to go waste. Wow. Time. So that was the big change for me to say, look, I've got to take this serious and, and be able to provide. And then, you know, as I've got into finance, when I've got into finance, I've realized, Paul, Paul, when I tell you, not one of my clients was black. Imagine doing your job and you're the only black financial advisor that you know. And then, and then when you see all your clients, none of your clients are black. Black people are coming into the bank, mm. but they're getting loans, they're getting credit cards, they're, they're having debt issues, they're getting their accounts closed, they're, they're struggling. Mm. And yeah, I'm like, why, why, why have I got white, Asian, you know, Jewish, other, other black people from other backgrounds coming in and saying, Amanda, here's, here's 100,000 I want to invest, or here's this one. I'm like, where, where's the education? Mm. Like, what's missing? Mm. And so, as I started to speak to my clients, I started to realize that the gap was, was financial literacy. Mm. These people, a lot of my white clients, they will come in and say, I have a child. I need to open a savings account for my kids. I need to take out life insurance. Um, I need to, I need to start. And I've got my, I've got my house. So I want to take equity out. And when I ask them where they get this knowledge from, they'll just say, no, this is what my parents did. They didn't even realize it was financial advice. It was their culture. It's just, this is what my parents did for me. So that's what I'm going to do for my children. Well, where did that come from? That came from a before previous generations getting financial advice yeah. and then passing that knowledge down yeah. to their children yeah. and passing it down. But if, if mom and dad um, from a, a Nigerian or African background have come to another country, they haven't been taught how the system works here in the UK. So it's the same thing for the Caribbeans when they came over. They weren't taught how things are done here in the UK. And so because of that, there was a lack of, lack of education. And so, and so for me, it was like, that's my, that's what I need to do. I need to stop sitting here, just helping rich people get richer. I need to leave the banks, leave my comfort zone and go out and educate people from a similar background to me so that they can make better financial decisions. And that's what I do today. Oh, it's so powerful. So powerful. So powerful. How do you, how do you, advise someone who has a nine to five job and they want to start this journey of entrepreneurship by the side yes i always feel that what what are you doing from five till nine so you do your nine to five but what are you doing from five till nine very good question hmm. and and for a lot of it you're watching netflix EastEnders, netflix you're watching nollywood you're and then you're wondering why your life isn't progressing Mm. And then you're and then you're blaming the devil. The devil doesn't even need to bother you. <laughs> you are your own devil to yourself. There's no devil for you. Like, do you understand? You are the one keeping you where you are. The I poor, like that. The, the poor devil is minding his business. You're there blaming him. Me, bro. I heard you say this at the conference a lot. It cracked me up, bro. <laughs> like the devil doesn't even remember your address. You're not even important to him. <laughs> It doesn't need to do anything. You can mess yourself up by yourself, you know? And so it's so important that we start to look for beyond our, our situation and say, actually, okay, like, because I always say to people, there's 365 days in a year. Mm. Why only get paid on 12 of them? Come on, like, brother. And like, if you did a test and you only got 12 out of 365. Come on, days, man. Come on, man. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> That's a one-way flight. You know, your parents will say, let's go on holiday. <laughs> go on holiday. You're not coming back. You're staying in the village. You're going to stay in that village and learn, you know? <laughs> so for, for me, it's like, okay, look, even if you gave yourself two hours and said, okay, what can I do in these two hours? If you can, if you can find a way to make £25 an hour, that's an extra £50 a day that you're making. £50 times five, times four do you know what i mean we're talking we're talking money now that's an extra thousand pounds in, in your household mm. now if you then said i'm going to use that thousand pounds into an education so that now that education means that the things that i learn instead of making 25 pounds an hour now i can make 100 pounds an hour now you're making 200 pounds a day see the problem is is that when we make the extra money 
we get comfortable with the extra money, but that money is never going to be enough. An extra thousand pounds a month is not going to be enough to change your situation. Mm. So what you need, what you needed to do was take that thousand pounds and put it back into yourself, invest back into yourself so that your hourly rate that you can do on your own can go from 25 to 100 to 200. And then all of a sudden, now what happens is, is we get to a point where we're bringing in this income. All of a sudden you can hire someone. You're not even having to do it. You just, you just do the overseeing. Someone else is doing the hard work. Mm. And so what I'm, the problem is, is that we get comfortable in our comfort zone, right? But when you look at your comfort zone, I always tell people, do you want to work forever? And everyone always tells me, no, I don't want to work forever. But if you look at the way you manage your money and the way your money comes in, you're going to work forever. Because the way your lifestyle is set up right now is that you go to work, you get money, you spend that money on your lifestyle, you go to zero and then you go back to work. And if you now need to tell yourself, how do I make a difference? How do I get money, take a portion of that money, make that money work for me, so in the future, that if those investments will replace my income so I don't have to go out and work. And that's the goal. The goal is not to be rich. The goal is not to be famous. The goal is not to be a celebrity. The goal is not to be a big baba. Like, it's not to be, you know, ogre and everyone pat you on the back. The goal is to get to live life on your terms in your time. And so, the, and so when you now have the minutes and the hours to do the things you enjoy with your life that we know is fleeting. I mean, we all remember when we were kids in, in primary school or secondary yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. And now we've got kids in primary school yeah. and secondary school. Yeah, come on, brother. Time. You can say that time again. Goes, it goes yeah. so quick. And so what, we want to control that time. So that's the goal. But we're so busy trying to show off, buying clothes and buying cars and houses and going. People are traveling business class. They don't even own a business. <laughs> oh, my God, this guy. <laughs> These lines, man. <laughs> My God, what a man. <laughs> I knew this interview was going to be bad. <laughs> Flying business card, you don't even want a business. Oh my goodness, this guy's dope. <laughs> Think about it, and 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 what, for people that don't understand, the whole point of business class was designed that you're offsetting that expense. Your business is paying for it, hence why it's called business class. That it's it's it's, it's something that you're expensing through your business. But people, are you might you might you might get all these thoughts there. Let me just talk about my sponsor for this episode. <laughs> this episode of the Paul Four Podcast was sponsored by Sales Factory Community. Sales Factory is a WhatsApp group where we teach sales and marketing and marketing psychology from Monday to Friday. We review a book every month. We've done that for four years and we network every single quarter. To join the community, click on the link on the show notes. If you're listening to this on Spotify and join the community, or if you're watching this on YouTube, click on the link in the show notes as well. Let's get back to the show. Man is a killer. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. No, so for me, it's just it's just the mindset shift. It's the and this is another thing. What I tell people again, if I meet someone that's employed, when you're employed, especially in the UK, now any additional money that you're getting, you're losing some of that due to tax. Especially once you start to earn over fifty fifty thousand, now you start to go into the forty percent. So you go from paying twenty percent tax to forty percent tax. So that means forty percent of any money that you bring in as an employee, you're now losing. If you can have a limited company, what happens with a limited company is that money comes in first into your company, you pay all your expenses, and then you pay tax. And so if your expenses are dinner, if your expenses is travel, if your, expen if your business expenses are the things, some of the things that we are paying through our salary, for our lifestyle, we should actually have a be paying that through our business. And this is when you start to make money work for you. And, this, and so this is why when people say, no, I don't want to be an entrepreneur, I'm not saying everyone should be an entrepreneur, but everyone should have a limited company when you get over a certain amount of earning to make sure that your expenses and the things that cost you in life, your lifestyle is paid for your business. My friend just got a car, was paying a car in his own name. He just got his car for his business. And because it's an electric car, you know, the benefiting kind is only 2%. 2%. Whereas if you had a, if you had a car, a normal car, it would have been 15%. So it's about 
why am I going to pay a car through my salary after the, youth, the government's already taken tax from me? I'm then going to use that to pay a car. I'm going to use that to pay a holiday. I'm going to use that to, when I can, I can use my business to pay this stuff and I get to pay for that before I have to pay tax. I pay tax on whatever's left after I paid for my lifestyle. This is so good. This is so good. So much, so much wisdom here. You might know, what were some of the books? And because I mean, you're an author. You've got another book coming for children. I don't know when, yes. when, when you're publishing that. Because uh, I heard you say that at the at, at, at the conference. When, when is that dropping? <clears throat> so that's 5th of September. 5th of September, that book is going out. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Money. It's for kids aimed, aged between 9 and 12. And that's coming, that's coming out um, 5th, of, 5th of September. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. What were some of the books or a book that really, really helped you financially? I'd say, you know, for me, the big book, the first book that I read that really touched me was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah. And then after that, um, Richest Man in Babylon. That's a good book. And then Think and Grow Rich. Mm. The Secret Millionaire. Yeah. The Millionaire Next Door. Mm. Um, like, you know, um, the, the four, the four day work week. The four hour work week. Do you like Morgan? Ha do you like Morgan Housel? Yeah. I like, I like, I like, I, I love things that just make you think about, okay, actually, why do I work five days a week? Who, who said that was who said that was the thing who said i had to like if i actually can i how do i make things work for me and my lifestyle do you know what i mean because what will happen is is that i remember if i wasn't if i didn't if i didn't work 10 hours in a day i thought i was being lazy hmm. and now i can i can work at my own pace and and do three or four hours of intense and then enjoy the rest of the day that's right doing the things that things that i want to do you love doing yeah wow Emmanuel, this has been a fascinating conversation. My goodness. If somebody wants to say, okay, you know, I really enjoy this guy. And obviously, he has a lot more to say because he's a very busy man. His time is very valuable, so I'm scared. I need to let him go. <laughs> Where do people get more information from you? Do they follow you online? They've got a newsletter. They've got a new... And I, I'm going to put a link to your uh, Amazon link to your book. Yes. I'm going to put Amazon link to your, uh, I'm going to put a link to your Instagram page. Yes. So what else would you want people to know to sign up on? Because I think there's so much you, you have to say to us. Yeah, so definitely follow on, on the social media. So the Eman Effect um, UK. So that's the Instagram. Follow that. I like the name of your business, the Eman Effect. I love it. <laughs> I remember when you were speaking at the conference, they were playing this uh, flavor song. <laughs> and you were walking out like, yo. <laughs> Love it, love you know, it. Uh, yeah, I called it the e manifest. It came from people. So people used to go, they used to go out and they'll be wanting to go and spend money and then they'll hear my voice. Oh, you know, yeah! And they'll be like, oh, that's the e manifest. You, you know, should, you should do a ringtone, man. You should do a ringtone, man. I love it, I love it, I love it. it from so many people. Yeah, lovely. So is the e manifest.com? Um, so yeah, I've got, I've got a finance. Yeah, the e manifest. So no, the, the website, the, um, the email effect is on Instagram. Okay. On Instagram, on um, on Twitter, on um, TikTok, all of those types of uh, social media platforms. It's emmanuelsuko.com is, is the website. Um, team at emmanuelsuko.com is the email address. What The reason I say people should follow is that I'm bringing out a financial um, literacy online school for adults where I'm going to be teaching about money, finance, how to how to build your business, how to take your side hustle to the next level, how to really monetize, how to make this money thing work for you. So if you're someone that's like, I work hard, but I don't see the benefits, I don't see the fruit of my labor, yeah. then that's a community that you can join in the future. Also, later on this year, we're going to be announcing our um, Saturday school, our financial Saturday school for kids. So kids age 14 to 18, we're going to be having Saturday school with them every other week teaching them about money and finance um, and getting them to understand that from young so we've got the adults and the kids and this is my mission just to empower as many people with finance because it's not taught in schools it really should be but it's not so we're going to teach us we're going to teach ourselves wow this is so beautiful i'm going to put all of that in the show notes uh for people to follow and then uh, join the community because i believe in what you're doing so much thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, these kids are on holiday, but it took time to to have this conversation uh, with us. Yeah, so thank you so much for coming. So guys, if you're listening, I hope you enjoyed this. Click on the subscribe button, write a comment, 
I'll send the comments to Emmanuel about what you think about the 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 episode. I think I thought it was dope. I thought it was dope. I'm gonna stop the recording now. I'll just do a little bit before I let you before I let you go. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. This this is what we do. Um, so this is my like 16 years now. I've been doing this 16 years. Yeah. So as a business set, um, been seven years, seven years as a business on my own, but as a financial advisor, 16 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's going well. It's going really well. Yes. Yeah. People don't realize the trauma, the things that you've been through in life, how much it affects the decisions that you make today. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and people miss it though. The, the biggest thing was, there was so, like I said, those buildings that motivated me, everybody that lived where I lived could see those buildings. But they, they, didn't, they weren't motivated. Do you know what I mean? But it's some people who just miss it. Like there's so many opportunities to to be motivated, to see, to gain inspiration. But you're so stuck looking at your phone, looking at the TV, watching other people that you don't see the inspiration that's around you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. 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 Mm hmm Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I want to do that. No, that's a great tip. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. I will. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's that's how I need to convert people to, yeah. 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 Yes. Opposite. Okay. Wow. Okay. How much? How much is that? Wow. That's nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. That's that's simple. No, no, no. Makes sense. How much does Substack take? How, what? Huh? And 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 there's no Substack doesn't take no percentage. Okay. Yeah. No. Definitely. I wanna. I'm, Yeah, think about that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, but we're doing a news that every we do our news that every every week for so monitor, yeah, definitely. And then then I can then add more value to the 
to it and let's talk about what's happening this week on what's going on in the economy what are the tips like we said with the icers the stuff whatever things to look out for and people can pay additional for that perfect all right perfect thank you so much thank you yes I will. No problem. My pleasure. Uh, thank you. Uh, you too. Take care, yeah? All right. Bye-bye-bye.